it all right, everybody? All right, we should be good to go. Stream is firing up. Welcome back to day 73 of coverage of the war in Ukraine and world news. I'm your host, Andy Mercado, and let's get into it. Today, there were six strikes in the city of Odessa. Russia is preparing for the May 9th victory parade. And I'm going to be discussing with you guys about streaming during these hours. And I plan to edit down the live stream to about 10 to 15 minutes and then posting a video of all the important things that we cover uh, later on in the evening. So I'm considering keeping that I'm considering keeping this time uh, the time to do the live stream and the deep dive and then posting a video later. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, check in everybody. Welcome back. Day 73 of coverage of the war in Ukraine. Again, I'm your host, Andy Mercado, and I'll see you guys after this short intro. All right, everybody, welcome again. Check into the stream, comment where you're tuning in from, what city, what state, where in the world you guys are tuned in from. Again, I'm your host, Andrew Mercado, independent journalist, U.S. Army veteran. We've been covering the war in Ukraine since day one, and again, now we're on day 73. You guys can follow along in the description of the video. Russian Duma speaker accuses the United States of being directly involved in fighting against Russia in Ukraine. Vostula Volodin, Speaker of the Lower House of Parliament in Duma, accused the U.S. of direct involvement in military action against Russia. Washington is essentially coordinating and developing military operations, directly participating in military actions across Russia, he said. The U.S. and other Western allies have supplied Ukraine with heavy weapons, but repeatedly said they won't take part in the fighting. Sandu sees no military threat to Moldova amid explosions in Transnistria. Moldova is not threatened now, Moldovan President Maya Sandu said during a meeting with the Lithuanian president. 
She added that the Moldovan authorities continue to monitor the situation close, closely and are doing everything possible to prevent destabilization. Several explosions were reported on May 7th in the Russian-occupied region of Transnistria, bordering Ukraine. Governor, Russian aviation strikes Sumy Oblast with missiles, one person injured. Russian atta Russian, Russians attack the areas near the towns of Koton, Miropilia, on May 7th, according to Governor Sumy Oblast Dmitry Zavitsky. Russian forces strike Odessa Mikolaev, a spokesperson for the Odessa Regional Administration, Serhii Bratchuk said on national television that Russian forces fired several missiles at Odessa, adding that no further details are known yet. In the southern city of Mykolaiv, Russian troops hit an energy-generating company building when 20 workers were in the office. There were no casualties, the company had said. Obunzman, Russia plans to give Russian citizenship to Ukrainians in occupied parts of the Kyrgyzstan Oblast and introduce the ruble. According to Obunzman, Ludmian Denisova, Russian forces also plan to return the coat of arms that Kyrgyzstan Oblast had during the Russian Empire times. Denisova added that residents who are against the occupation are being tortured. Over 500 people are currently being held in torture chambers. Russia launches missiles on the Odessa. Russia launches six missiles on the Odessa Oblast. Some infrastructure were damaged, but no casualties were reported thus far, according to. Odessa City Council. Jan Stoltenberg, NATO sees no change in Russian nuclear strategy since February 24th. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg told German newspaper Welt that Russia's nuclear threats were irresponsible and that, quote, if Russian, excuse me, and quote, if the nuclear weapons were used, there would be only losers on all sides. Russian shelling destroys the museum in the Kharkiv Oblast. The Hyolori Sukhovorda. National Museum was attacked late on May 6th. The building was destroyed, however, the most valuable exhibits have been moved to a safe place in advance. The U.S. Department of Defense has announced a new ninth $150, $150 million military aid package to Ukraine. The aid package will include 25,155 millimeter artillery shells, three anti-artillery systems, electronic jamming equipment, and spare parts for vehicles. Russian missile strike targeted Odessa International Airport, and firefighting teams are working to put out the fires. Good afternoon, good afternoon. All right. The other thing today, it is Supporter Saturday on our platforms. Again, I'm an independent journalist, independent independent media, and those that are supporters of the Facebook page and are members of the YouTube channel and Patreon keep it going every month. They help me continue working. So on Mondays, I used to have the chat be for members and supporters, but that's going to be on Saturdays from now on, and that is today, all right? So every hour on the hour, I will unlock the chat so everybody can comment, and then we're going to do a viewer check-in, and you guys are going to comment where you guys are tuned in from, and then I'm going to put it back to supporters and members only, all right? So you guys will still be able to talk throughout the stream. It'll just be once an hour, all right? And that, that way, again, if you can't, monthly support right now if it's just not reasonable for you that's completely fine i still want you to watch i still want you to engage with the chat all right but this is just the one day a week to give back uh to those that monthly support all right just the one day a week one day all right i promise it'll only be one day and we haven't done it for a couple weeks now because i wanted to get it uh reset all right so i'm going to set the chat now i'll let you guys know and again we'll be checking in with everybody in an hour Set in the chat now. I'm going to welcome all of our members in. There we go. Chat is now set. All right, let's go around the map of Ukraine. We have a lot of air raid, a lot of air raid alarms going off around the country, especially to the west. We got Oregon tuned in. Welcome, New York City. Good to see you. So let's just check here to the west of the country. Rivni in the Ravinska Oblast, Lviv, Lviska Oblast, Volinska Oblast, Kalamanitsia Oblast and Red Alert, Aerial Alert, Science, Siren Sounding and Take Cover Now. All right, Take Cover Now. Zekaparchia Oblast, Red Alert, Aerial Threat, Siren Sounding and Take Cover Now. Chernobyl, Chir, Chernobyliska Oblast, Red Alert, Aerial Threat, Sirens. So these are all siren alarms, I just wanted to make sure. These are seven hours ago. Let's double check and refresh and see if there's anything new. See anything there? 
Nothing new with the the red alerts. There isn't anything different. Still alerts, aerial a threat. All right. So all of these blue markers on the map are aerial aerial threats, aerial alerts that you guys see. There, whenever you hear the air raid alarm going off in cities, that gets marked on the map. We haven't seen any live. We haven't had any live streams of Ukraine in quite some time. So I haven't been able to tune in and listen myself, but these are all geolocated reports within the country. Let's get down to the city of Odessa. And I'm actually going to pull up an article to start off. Six missiles hit Ukraine's coastal city of Odessa. May 7th, six missiles hit the southern Ukrainian port city of Odessa on Saturday. The spokesperson, spokeswoman for Ukraine's southern military command told the country's public broadcaster. Spokeswoman Natalia, Natalia Humyunuk said four rockets hit a furniture factory in a residential area, while the other two struck an already damaged runway strip. She added that information on casualties was being clarified. Odessa Regional Administration spokesman Serhi Brachuk earlier said four missiles had hit Odessa region on Saturday without causing any casualties. Reuters was not able to immediately confirm the details of the report. Let's try to find another article. U.S. News. Six missiles hit Ukraine's coastal city of Odessa. Six missiles hit the southern Ukrainian port city of Odessa on Saturday. The spokeswoman for Ukraine's southern military told the command of the country's public broadcaster. Spokeswoman Natalia Hermiachuk said four rockets hit a missile factory. So I thought it was six. Four hit the furniture factory and the other two uh, already struck an already damaged runway strip. Casualties are being clarified. Let's try to find, I'm trying to find video. Pull up some video of that. Show you guys exactly where Odessa is on the map. All right, we do have video. So the city of Odessa, like I've been telling you guys, has been getting hit more and more, more frequently, multiple times a week now. It was once a week, or it, it went from it went from like once a week, twice a week, to now it's multiple times a week. Hey, the other thing too on YouTube, let's let's limit. I'm gonna lower the mods down. And if you're a mod, if you have another account, comment on that. It's member day. We don't need so many wrenches in the chat. All right, mods. I'm gonna take Brian. I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna take your wrench. Just for today, member days, we don't need a chat full of moderators. All right. No. Perfect. All right, let's look at video in the city of Odessa. This is an aftermath in the city of Odessa today. You want me to you want me to change the cursor? So I only updated it to look look like that because people had a, tr a tough time seeing it. But I can definitely adjust that. No, it's okay. Member days, we don't really need mods, honestly. Ryan, you're good. The firefighters are running. That's the one thing for sure, is the firefighters, too, need to get more more credit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nikki. Firefighters have been doing work nonstop in Ukraine. Video showing a Russian cruise missile flying over Odessa. May 6th. City of Odessa is how I see it in my dreams. It's May 2nd. 
Another mysterious fire. Russia. Hours ago. Odessa on edge. How come there wasn't too many? Russia continues to target residential areas in Ukraine on May. There isn't any. So they're still waiting for more confirmation on the strikes in Odessa. Let's see if there's any clips here. Four missile strikes in Odessa with cruise missiles launched by strategic. I'm trying to find videos here. In the Odessa region, the Russian military struck with four cruise missiles, according to Operational Command in the south. Pull up another one. Two missile strikes in Odessa district. Two strikes in Odessa district of Odessa region. That's what this says here. Two strikes in Odessa district of Odessa region. Translate this. How you doing, Edward? The head of Odessa Regional at State Administration reported that in the evening, the occupiers fired a missile at the Odessa district with two missiles. There are no victims. No victims reported. More missiles striking Odessa. Let's see if we have a video here. Blurred. Zoomed in a little more. More time. Блять, хуярить начали, сука, ракеты летают, пиздец, блять. Again, they are, they're blurring the buildings to prevent the Russians from seeing where their strikes are landing within cities. So that's why you guys are starting to see more and more of the rooftops and more and more of infrastructure when we're seeing these strikes. Uh, the tops of buildings and the bottoms are just completely blurred out for OPSEC. So we're just seeing more and more of it. So videos are going to be harder to see. Four post UAV was shot down over the Odessa region this morning. Translate that. May 7th over the Odessa region was destroyed. Reconnaissance and strike UAV outpost. A drone of this type costs more than $7 million. It can carry weapons. A container with an ATGM, which is an uh, ATGM missile. Okay, south. It's okay in the south. Four post UAV shot down. Let's check out over here even further to the west. What was this? Multiple strikes reported. The same update. Same update, two telegrams. And north of Mykolaiv, so let's swing around. So this was Odessa. Here's the map. I'll try to be slower on the map and not move it around so fast. So here's the map of Ukraine. Zoom in once, all right? So we were just down here in the south western region of Ukraine. This is Odessa. And then Mariupol is the southeastern port city. So I didn't mean to zoom in so fast. I'll go a little slower on my zooms. All right, I'll work on that. City of Odessa, now we're gonna move over towards Mykolaiv, a little bit, a little bit north of Mykolaiv. Let's translate. Three arrivals, so I'm assuming that's three strikes in Mykolaiv. I'll be much slower on my map movements, I promise. Thank you, Gary. All right. Now the city of Kyrgyzstan. When I, I'm used to, when I was in the military, you know, map movement and everything is just, you're just quick, so I'll be better on that. All right, city of Kyrgyzstan, Russian occupied Kyrgyzstan. Russia has come to Kyrgyzstan region forever and there will be no return to the past, said Secretary of the United Russia General Council, Andrei Churchak. 
I know. I'll I'll go slower. I promise. I'll I'll actively work on it. Russia has come to the Kyrgyzstan region forever, and there will be no return to the past," said Andriy Turchak, secretary of the Russian, excuse me, secretary of the United Russia General Council. Now let's move northeast of Kyrgyzstan. Ukrainian military destroyed Russian base at Ivano Kepni village of the Mykolai region. How you doing, Tia? I'm going to translate this. In the south bug direction, the enemy inflicted fire damage using artillery on the positions of our troops. He fired at the civilian infrastructure in the city of Mykolaiv with rockets and multiple defense, excuse me, multiple rocket launchers. In the settlement of the Ivano Kepin, units of the defense forces destroyed a warehouse with ammunition and up to 20 units of enemy military equipment. In the temporary occupied city of Kyrgyzstan, the invaders are taking a number of measures to ensure the activities of the Russian occupation forces and support the Russian occupation regime. The number of checkpoints and mobile patrols has increased. During the previous day, 14 Orlin UAVs were hit by the Air Defense and Land Forces. Mykolaiv region. Okay. Zoom out really quick. We're in the southwest. Now we're going to move towards the southeast. Russian troops shelled Kaminsky village in the Zaporizhia region. Occupiers fired on the village of Kaminsk. Where is this here? Let's look up this location. Kaminskoy Vasilvsky district. A green corridor was supposed to open through the settlement. That's always the case. A green corridor was supposed to. Russia never obeys it. Let's look up exactly where this is. Again, y'all, today is just member and supporter day. Grab the badge in the chat on Facebook or grab the, the hit the join button on the channel to be able to comment. That's not it. That's Gazprom Arena. That doesn't look right either. Kaminsky Village. Let me type it in like this. There's so many different, so many, there's so many different ones. This one's showing it to the north west of Dnipro. I mean, Kamiansky, it's right here. Oh, it's not pulling it up on my Google Maps. Let's try to search for it. So on this map, it's showing as Primorsky. Oh, it's a little bit even further to the south than that. Premiorsky's right here. Here it is. Kamiansky. It's spelled a little differently. It's got an apostrophe on the Ukraine map. Here's what it looks like. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. On a countryside here in this part of the country. These pictures were taken in July of 2015. 
I haven't really Google Maps this area yet. This is in the Dnipro Oblast. an idea of what the region looks like. Kam Kamiinsky region, okay. South of Zaporizhia. Gonna work our way around. These are air raid alarms. When you guys see the blue blips on the map, those are air raid and missile defense alarms. So these are all Ukrainian happenings and the red is Russia. The filled in red region in Ukraine is Russian occupied territory. The dark red to the east is Luhansk and Donetsk and the Donbass. And it's dark red here because they've had that since 2014. This is Crimea to the south, and that's why that is dark red. That's been annexed since 2014, so Russia's had that since for eight years now. So that is why Crimea and Luhansk and Donetsk are in the red, whereas the south, the southern part, southern region of Ukraine, and to the far east, that's not dark red because those are areas that Russia has taken since the invasion has began. All right, let's work our way to, down to Mariupol, southeastern port city. An extensive evacuation of the bomb Mariupol drama theater is underway. New satellite images from Maxar Technology show. This, this update was from yesterday. So there, I don't think there's been anything new on the Mari, Mariupol drama theater. But they are starting to... There's a crane there. And an excavation is underway. There were, there were hundreds of people taking refuge in that drama theater when it was hit. One killed, six wounded as a result of a Russian ATGM strike in an evacuation vehicle in the Azovstal. Looked at that. This is an update from yesterday, so let's just see if there's any news reports from Mariupol. I'm not seeing any on our, on our map today. Ukraine says all women and children now evacuated from Mariupol steel mill. This is the latest. This was posted 18 minutes ago. Kiev, May 7th. All women, children, and elderly civilians have been evacuated from the Azovstal steel mill in Mariupol, Ukraine's deputy prime minister said on Saturday. Despite what military officers said was an ongoing Russian assault at the plant, this part of the Mariupol humanitarian operation is over. Deputy Prime Minister Ernia Verestruk wrote on the Telegram messaging app, The Soviet-era steel mill, the last holdout in Mariupol for Ukrainian forces, has emerged as a symbol of resistance to the wider Russian effort to capture swaths of eastern and southern Ukraine in the 10-week war. So, reports today, as we're, we're looking at it right now, this was just posted. Ukraine says all women and children now evacuated from steel mill. Well, obviously, we'll check out a few more articles to verify that. This part of the Mariupol, Mariupol humanitarian operation is over. Soviet air steel mill last, I read that. Under heavy bombardment, fighters and civilians have been trapped for weeks in deep bunkers and tunnels that crisscross the site with little food, water, or medicine. Russian forces backed by tanks and artillery tried again on Saturday to storm the Azovstal, Ukraine's military command had said. Part of, a part of a ferocious assault to dislodge the last Ukrainian defenders in the strategic port city of the Azov Sea. Weeks of Russian bombardment have left Mariupol in ruins and the steel mill has been largely destroyed. Several groups of civilians have left the sprawling complex over the past week during pauses in fighting. Earlier on Saturday, Russia's Interfax news agency cited Moscow-backed separatists in Ukraine's Donetsk region as saying um, 50 more people had been evacuated from the besieged steelworks. However, by 1600 GMT, Reuters journalists had not seen any sign of their arrival at the reception center in a separatist-controlled area near Mariupol. Separatists had a total 
of 176 civilians had now been evacuated from the plant. Evacuations of civilians began last weekend from the Azovstal plant, brokered by the United Nations and International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC. They were halted during the week by renewed fighting. Earlier this week, the city's mayor estimated that 200 civilians were trapped at the plant. It was not clear that after the deputy prime minister's statement on Saturday if civilian men were still in the complex. On Friday, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in a late night video address that Ukraine was working on a diplomatic effort to save fighters barricaded inside the steelworks. The fighters have vowed not to surrender. It was unclear how many remain there and Ukrainian officials fear Russian forces want to wipe them out by Monday when Moscow commemorates, commemorates the Soviet Union's victory over Nazi Germany in World War II. And we'll be we'll be going we'll be likely watching that victory day parade here i'll be live reacting to it on the channel he's in such a in washington u.s central intelligence agency director william byrne said russian president vladimir putin is convinced quote doubling down on the conflict will improve the outcome for russia which western officials say has so far failed in its war aims he's in a frame of mind in which he doesn't believe he can afford to lose byrne said at a financial times event Putin declared victory in Mariupol on April 21st. Order the steel. Order the steel. Let me try that again. Order the plant sealed off and called for Ukrainian forces inside to disarm. But Russia later resumed its assault on the plant. Moscow calls its actions on February 24th a quote special military operation to disarm Ukraine and rid of what it calls anti-Russian nationalism fomented by the West. Ukraine and the West say Russia launched an unprovoked war. So this is just further information. That's stuff that we know. Russian forces hit. Okay. Want to learn more about the the Azovstal steel plant? Here's from the BBC. Ukraine war. Civilians now out of the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. 15 minutes ago. This is the latest. All elderly. Women and children have been evacuated from the besieged Azovstal steelworks in Mariupol, says Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Ernia Verestruk. The operation to rescue civilians trapped there began a week ago. It has been co-coordinated by United Nations and Red Cross, which have not confirmed the development. So that's important to note that the two organizations that are co-opting it haven't confirmed yet. Ukrainian forces are holding out at the heavily bombed plant. The last part of the city is not under Russian control. So here's the plant if you have no idea where it is or this is your first stream all right mariupol azovstal steel plant is here the reports that all women children and elderly are out still waiting to be confirmed by the red cross and the un but definitely i mean reports are coming out The whereabouts of the evacuees are not yet clear, but Ms. Verichuk said that uh, the Minister Verichuk said this part of the humanitarian operation was now complete. In the past, it has taken days for those evacuated to reach the Ukrainian held territory. Earlier this week, it was estimated that 200 civilians were still trapped inside the plant. Much of Mariupol has been destroyed in the war. Hmm. Here's the plant information. One of the largest metalworks factories in Europe. Sprawling industrial complex covers four square miles, 10 square kilometers. Has a large network of underground rooms and tunnels. Hundreds of people have been living in its bomb shelters. This is from Maxar Technologies. Meanwhile, Russia said there will be no Victory Day celebrations in Mariupol. There is that update. So there had been reports, and I was unclear uh, myself if they were actually going to hold a, a parade in that city, and they're not. That is the latest. Russia said there will be no Victory Day celebrations in Mariupol. Victory Day is celebrated on, on 9 May in Russia to mark the Soviet Union's victory in World War II. A time will come, and there will be a big celebration there, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters, adding there were no plans for official visits on the day. 
At the same time, intense fighting has continued in the Kharkiv region as troops attempt to regain control of the area from the Russians. Kharkiv region is to the east. We'll be getting up there on our map. We're going counterclockwise for all the reports, but that's up here. We're not up there yet. The Kharkiv is up here in the east in the north Donbass. We'll get there. Ukraine's armed forces said on Saturday that they had taken five villages northeast of the country's second largest city. Analysts say the Ukrainian operation is developing into a successful counter-offensive. Kharkiv has been the focus of intense shelling since the 24th February invasion. Every day. Met City. Kharkiv. Let's look up another one. So that's two articles, but still no confirmation from the Red Cross and the UN. Those are the latest two, 50, 20 minutes and 26 minutes ago. Here at NPR, all civilians have been evacuated from a besieged steel plant in Mariupol. Three reports. Zaporizhia, Ukraine, Russian forces fired cruise missiles at the southern Ukrainian port city of Odessa on Saturday and bombarded a steel mill in Mariupol, housing Ukrainian civilians and fighters hoping to complete their conquest of the port city in time for Victory Day celebrations. Ukraine announced that all women, children, and elderly have been evacuated from the steel plant and key Russian war objective that has long been under siege. In a sign of unexpectedly effective defense that has sustained the fighting into its 11th week, Ukraine's military flattened Russian positions on the Black Sea island that was captured in the war's first days and become a symbol of Ukrainian resistance. Is that the only part about the steel plant? Here we go. New satellite photos analyzed by the Associated Press showed vast devastation at a sprawling seaside steel mill that is the last corner of Ukrainian resistance in the city. Buildings at the Azovstal plant, including one under hundreds, un one under which hundreds of fighters and civilians are likely holding, had large gaping holes in the roof, according to the images shot Friday by Planet Labs PBC. The president's order has been carried out. All women, children, and the elderly have been evacuated from Azovstal Steelworks, Deputy Prime Minister Ernia Verestrick said on Saturday, that's today, without elaborating, this part of the Mariupol humanitarian operation has been complete. The Russian news agency TASS has reported that 50 civilians were evacuated from the plant on Saturday, a, simil a similar number left on Friday. The latest evacuees followed roughly 500 others who were allowed to leave the plant in other parts of the city in recent days. Evacuating civilians from the plant, excuse me, evacuating civilians from the plant, them has drawn the world's attention. Evacuating the city, evacuating civilians from the plant, them has drawn the world's attention. I'm hoping I'm just not saying that wrong and it's a grammatical error. With the United Nations and the International Committee at the Red Cross desperately trying to organize departures. In recent days, fighters inside the plant had described bringing out small groups of civilians who had been hiding for weeks. The fighters issued a statement via social media saying both they, had, both they and the Russians have used a white flag system to halt fighting in order to get civilians out. Interesting. But the Russian forces have intensified fire on the steel mill in recent days with mortars, artillery, truck-mounted rocket systems, aerial bombardment, and shelling from the sea, making evacuation operations difficult. It remains unclear what will happen to the Ukrainian fighters there, but those still in combat in the hundreds believed to be wounded. In recent days, the Ukrainian government has been reaching out to a variety of international organizations to try and guarantee them safe passage. The escape of the civilians puts new pressure on Ukraine to find a new way out for the fighters who have vowed not to surrender. Already, Russian forces have probed the plant and even reached into its into its warren of tunnels, according to Ukrainian officials. So now that all the civilians, the women, the children, and the elderly are out, all that's left in there are the, the military in the plant. And there's hundreds of, there's hundreds of injured. I saw, oh man, I saw a video yesterday. It's <clears throat> not good. Uh, you, eh, where was I? Ukrainian government called on. I read that. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said influential states were involved in efforts to rescue the soldiers, although he did not mention any by name. We are all working on a diplomatic options to save our troops who are still at Azovstal, he said in his nightly video address early Saturday. 
The relief of those who have been evacuated was tampered by memory of those still left behind. They need our help badly, said Serhi Komenko, 31, who fled with his wife, 8-year-old daughter, and four others from their bunker, leaving behind another 30. We need to get them out. While they pounded away at the plant, Russian forces struggled to make significant gains elsewhere. Okay, that's that's it on the Azovsto plant. War fighters are still in there. So that's multiple reports now. Of all women, children, and elderly are evacuated from the Azovsto plant. Let's see if there's anything on Twitter about Azovsto. Russia violated its truce and it promised that the Azovstal plant Mariupol. Commander Sivoslav Palomar says in a video posted to Telegram, saying that Russians broke into the territory of the plant three days ago. Та чорт забирай, проявляють таку витримку і героїзм, що Україна повинна знати, що означає бути вірним батьківщині. В черговий раз росіяни порушили обіцянку щодо перемир'я та не дали можливість на евакуацію цивільних осіб, які продовжують ховатися від обстрілів у підвалах. All right. I have fine 32 minutes ago. Here you go. All women, children, and the elderly have been evacuated from the besieged Azovstal steel plant in the city of Mariupol, the Ukrainian official has said. There's, they got a Z right here. That's the Russian Tiger MRAP. That would be scary having to do like that type of exchange, right? Can you imagine what that must feel like? You know, you go from occupied city in your own country of a foreign, well, it's Russia, but imagine going from Russian occupied region and you have to do like a civilian exchange. So you leave this and you end up with the U Ukrainians and the humanitarian efforts. You go from this to that. And you don't know what Russia is going to do because they haven't obeyed anything. Russia could open fire on that bus right now. They've been doing things like that. looks at the all women children and the elderly have been evacuated all women children in addition russian troops fired on the azovstal chemical plant they all they do so here's the newest video of shelling on the plant so that ha that occurs daily this is also a daily, a daily occurrence at the plant. 
Seven minutes ago, the process of evacuating civilians from the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol has been completed. I put a tweet out saying that it's all women, children, the elderly have been evacuated. It's just all over now. 11 minutes ago, that's in Odessa. Both Russia and Ukrainian reports. So you have Western media and Russian media reporting this. So first, I mean, not, not too often both Russian media and Western media line up. I, I assume we can say that this is happening then, if both of them are saying the same thing. Until day, up until this point, it's information hasn't really matched up at all. Russia would be saying one thing, West will say another. Or, or Ukraine and or Ukraine and Russia will have hardly had any information lining up together. But th these reports are the first. Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation publishes, publishes footage of the evacuation of civilians from the territory of the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. Yeah, I, we've gone through multiple articles now, Western articles. So it's not just Russia reporting this. If it, listen, if it was Russia, if this, if it was just Russia saying this, I wouldn't believe it at all. I would I'd be like, all right, we need to wait for, we need to wait for Western sources, or we need to wait for more. And I looked at the the Western sources said it first, and now I'm seeing that Russia is also saying it. So. And Russia needs Russia needs to look good in, in a way right now. They don't have anything they have nothing that's like, okay, Russia did Russia did something to show that they because they, they haven't done anything to do that. They haven't done anything to show goodwill for humanitarian efforts to this point. Every time they've had a corridor open they bomb it or they have mines planted on it. Or they hit the buses. I also feel that the fact that the Red Cross and the UN were involved in this one and it wasn't Ukraine because all of the other evacuations out of Mariupol were, were, were uh, coordinated with Ukraine and Russia when they were doing the helicopter rides and doing the, the meetings and Russia never obeyed them and this now that, that the UN and the Red Cross are involved. Red Cross is sus to me, y'all. I don't. I listen. If you volunteer at the Red Cross, all power to you. You know, I'm not dogging on you. I'm not. I'm not digging on you. Nothing against you personally. Probably nothing even against the workers of the Red Cross personally. But I've learned some things about the Red Cross since covering this war, especially in the his the history of it. Unless they're just very good at very good at brokering humanitarian efforts with the worst of with the worst of governments we worked alongside the Nazis in World War two during the during the the criminal investigations into into the Russian genocide in Poland it was the Nazis and the Red Cross videos from the Azovstal plant Mariupol showing Azov regiment soldiers clearing the passage to the food warehouse that was blocked by the Russian bombing These are some of the soldiers that are still there in the Azovstal plant. Yeah, it does. That's some strange history. But, I mean, they were able to get the civilians out, so. Thank you, Laura. This is live right now, yes. Gonna find more video and information on that. Evacuation. This is all happening, yo, know, minutes. Ukraine says Ukraine says women, children, and elderly evacuated from Azovstal plant. So both Russia and Ukraine. Russian defense 
Soviet propaganda. I don't know. It's not. Let me see. Was this today? We saw this video a different way. The Sun's reporting it. What do you guys? What do you guys think? What did you guys think in the chat? You are you believe in the full evacuation is taking place? I mean, this is we're seeing Western sources and Russian sources say the same thing. It's coming from both Western media and Russian media that this evacuation. The Ukraine latest, all women, kids, and elderly. Bloomberg's reporting it. There's been, I mean, we looked at Reuters reported it. Sign up here to get the latest. All women, children, and elderly have been evacuated from the Zosso steel plant in Mariupol, a top Ukrainian official said. A top Ukrainian official said. A week into the rescue operation, Gazprom has written into its European client seeking to reassure them that they can pay for seeking gas. No oil imports. No, I would like to know more about the women and children here you go all women and children and elderly have been evacuated from the Azovstal steel plant Mariupol Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Ernia Verestruk said on Saturday without elaborating the president's order has been carried out all women children and the elderly have been evacuated from the Azovstal this part of the Mariupol humanitarian operation has been completed civilian evacuations have been going on for a week at the vast facility where hundreds of civilians and large numbers of Ukrainian military personnel have taken shelter while under Russian bombardment. Safe to say that, I mean, I'm, both, both of them are saying it, it says here, ABC News. All women and children and elderly people evacuated. So again, not just Russian media. A resident of Mariupol, Anton Gumulko, Gumulko, 30 years old, tells how he came under fire at the Azovstal. Munig is armily attempted to gather water from the bakery plant. My name is Anton Gumulko, I'm 30 years old. Я проживал по улице Волгодонской, дом 3. А, это Мариуполь? Да, да, это Левый берег, Мариуполь. Левобережный район. А, скажите, что произошло, как вы получили вот, травму руки? 16 марта пошел набрать воды, так как в городе нигде не было. На хлебозаводе имелись пожарные емкости, пожарные колодцы. Я взял 19-литровый All right, let me see if that'll fix it. Let me see if that fixed it. <sighs> Sorry, everybody. It's coming on back. Are you guys able to see the stream now? Oh, man. Are we good? Everybody in? Check into the stream, guys. I'm gonna wait till it comes on back. I'm gonna wait till everybody comes back. We're right, we're about at the hour mark, anyways. I'm gonna do a viewer check in. I don't. When this stuff happens, it bums me out. Thank you guys for coming on back. Are we good? I'm gonna open the chat up.
not getting much feedback from members. I need some more feedback in the chat. Are we good? I need some comments. Is the stream okay? Can you guys see well? I need some feedback really quick before we continue. And I, and I ended Facebook. No, I ended Facebook. It was the one that dropped off again. All right, it's good for you. Thank you. There we go. Now I'm seeing some feedback. All right. Yeah, I ended Facebook. Facebook was the reason that this happened again. Came over from Facebook, Minnesota watching. God, dude. I need to include Facebook. Like, I need that. I need to do a Facebook stream. I just can't. Oh, my God, dude. I'm so annoyed. All right, y'all. Thank you for coming back. I, that's that's it. I tried it again. Like it's it's fine for video games. I've never had an issue with like multi streaming, YouTube and Facebook together with video games. I just did for nearly four hours last night, and now I was just live and Facebook dropped off completely, bottomed out, and then it kills the YouTube stream too. Oh man, sorry about that, y'all. All right, you're coming back. Welcome back. All good here in East Freedom, Pennsylvania. It's all good. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Huck Finn. Good to see you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Nikki. Good to see you. Good. Thank you, Laura. Justin. All right. Good evening in United Kingdom time. We good. Perfect. Thank you for the feedback. All righty. Make sure you guys' live button is actually live. Hit the bottom left corner and make sure it is set to live. All right. Should be good now. I'm annoyed. All right. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Thank you guys for coming on back. I know, Facebook just continues giving issues. All right, let's get back into it. All right. Resident of Mariupol, Anton Gomolko, 30 years old, tells how he came under fire from the Azov, so wounding his arm while he attempted to gather water from the bakery plant. I'm going to go back. We missed the opening. My name is Anton Gomolko. Мне 30 лет. Я проживал по улице Волгодонской, дом 3. А, это Мариуполь? Да, да, это Левый берег Мариуполь. Левобережный район. А, расскажите, что произошло, как вы получили вот, травму руки? 16 марта пошел набрать воды, так как в городе нигде не было. На хлебозаводе имелись пожарные емкости, пожарные колодцы. Я взял 19-литровый бутыль и примерно в пол полдвенадцатого отправился за водой. Там получил ранение. Прилетела, не знаю, мина, не мина. Какой-то взрыв был. Был удар со стороны Азовстали, потому что у меня глухло правое ухо. Как раз через забор от хлебозавода находился комбинат Азовсталь. Меня осколком ударило, отсекло три пальца. А скажите, видели ли вы как представители вооруженных сил Украины или национальных батальонов, ну, тот же самый Азов, занимали дома мирных жителей там, или техника их стреляла от гражданских зданий? Да, я видел, ну... Утверждать не буду, кто это был, БСУ, либо батальон. Занимали здание на третьем этаже, охраняли БТР. А, то есть они, БТР рядом с живым БТР, зданием? БТР стоял между зданий, и они на третьем этаже заняли квартиру и охраняли БТР. А мирные жители были там, в этой квартире, или она пустая была? А, да, я встретил мужчину с этой квартиры, уже в другом бомбоубежище. Он сказал, что... Они попросили его освободить комнату. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do, y'all. I'm sweating, dude. I when that stuff happens, it's just like, oh man, this is nothing. It's out of my control. I need to practice powerlessness more. That's the one thing I need to do when things are just out of my control. I'm, I have a tough time because it's like, ah, so I'm. I gotta do separate streams still. I was. It's been working. It was been working. I tried to do a multi-stream to Facebook and YouTube because like. I need to, this stream is important um, and I want to start making videos out of these live streams and condensing it. And that is what I'm going to be doing YouTube. I'm going to be condensing these long streams down into like 10, 15 minute videos, editing them and then posting them later. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to have to do a separate live stream to Facebook. 
a, a Facebook Live. It won't be as long or extensive as the YouTube stream. But I do apologize for the, the flow messing up there. I, that bothers me. All right. So the latest again, all women, children, and elderly evacuated from Mariupol steel plant, Ukrainian official says. All right. So this is in Mariupol, southeastern port city in Ukraine. Now let's work our way to the Donbass. We're working our way around the country. Doesn't look like there's any updates in Luhansk and Donetsk. I'm not seeing any updates in that region. Oh, there's one. Just refreshed. Two days ago, missile launches in... That's two days ago. And a day ago, clashes near Yasun... Yavada, that's a day ago. May 6th, Yasuna Vataya. Oops. Let me see where this on our GPS is. All right. Just northeast of Donetsk. It's this little pocket right here. Let me switch the layer. Northeast of Donetsk. So here's Mariupol. I promise I'd be a little slower on the map. Here's Donetsk and the Donbass. And then the city that we're looking at is the red, the red marker. To give you guys an idea. Eastern region of Ukraine. Again, this was a this was yesterday, but I don't think I covered it or we saw this. That's a KA-52 alligator. Yep, KA-52 got the dual rotors on it. All, uh, all the most of the ground fighting is in the east. Now that it's outside of the Azovstal steel plant and to the eastern region of Ukraine. Some in Kyrgyzstan, between Kyrgyzstan and Mykolaiv. 37 minutes ago, explosions in Odessa. More. Something tells me this war won't end on the 9th. Who, do people really think this war is going to end on the 9th? Hey, listen. Listen, hey, look at this is, not, this is not going to end on the 9th. If you thought that this war was going to end on the 9th, sorry. All right, you were let down, you were led astray, you were run amok, lied to. I don't know what else to tell you, but this, this war is not ending on May 9th. You heard it here, all right? It's not going to end on May 9th. All right, now let's go north in the northern Donbass. This is Popa, or not northern, but about the central nor Donbass. I'd say Kharkiv is the, the northernmost region in the Donbass, or up in the northernmost region. Is in the central, central eastern region, Popasna. Rob on Speak the Truth calls it Pop Popsana. Heavy clashes continue in Popasna. Tanks, artillery, MLRS, and planes used. That was a day ago, so that was updates from yesterday. So fighting, fighting continues here on the eastern front, along this whole front line. But this, this fighting here has been going for eight years. All of the fighting along this line here on our map. There's trench systems and bunkers and all types of stuff on this border. That have been there for eight years. Donetsk Oblast, this was two days ago. I'm wondering why we're getting updates from two days ago right now. We get an update from seventh. Is there any updates on the seventh? There we go. Two hours ago, two boys killed as a result of a Russian army shelling with MLRS Grad in Previlia in the Luhansk region. Let's see what this is about quick. Oh man. I know there's gonna be a picture. 
That was going to be an article. Apologize about that. Which city is this in? In Previlia. They, they post anything to the social media, man. Looks like another village has been liberated. The, Tris the Triscuni village was fully liberated from the Russian army. Northeast Kharkiv. Okay, there's more space. We're going to call this white space because this is space that is part of Ukraine. Okay, there's more white space. Uh, more Ukrainian forces are pushing back the Russians. Seeing less and less red here on the eastern part of Kharkiv. Another one. So this is a village, damn near like a village a day now over here to the east of Kharkiv. They, get, they recaptured four of them, four, city, four villages yesterday, and four hours ago, the Triscuni village is fully liberated. Some more good news for Ukraine regaining control of their own country. Especially near the Kharkiv region. I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to bolster their, put a bunch of troops up there. Ukraine. So this village, they're working, they're working on the villages outside of the satellite cities and villages outside of Kharkiv. Let's go and check what this city looks out really, what this city looks like. Is a Lenin Memorial? No, it doesn't look like it. Soviet. This is that village that we are looking at here that just got liberated. Selfie for the... The Google Maps. There's some good news from Ukrainian for, for Ukraine. Interesting, interesting paths to the trees. We got walking paths in here. Can't really go on the streets. There's only a limited amount of places to go. Here's the furthest in you can go in on the road in the in the city. And I think it ends. Nope. Make sure I'm going into this town. Yeah, it goes as far as here, and that's it. Oh. Yeah, that's just, this is as far as we can go into the town. On the road. The Triscuni village in Kharkiv. Russian army shelled... Ivanchi village in Zolachev community damaged two railway cars with grain. What I'm thinking I'm going to do then, if I can't do a multi-stream, y'all, I'm thinking, how does a, how does a two-hour live stream sound instead of three hours? I know I'm, I'm a lot of you guys just like sitting and tuning in, but I feel like even a two-hour stream would be a little more, more digestible, too. Two-hour updates... And then you, if you can't stay for the whole thing and you don't have to, it's not too long of a video to catch up on later in the day. What am I looking for here? The Hark, doesn't make sense. Harkiv life, all of that. Google Translate, here we go. On May 7th, the Russian military fired on the railway tracks in the village of Ivanshki in the Zolachev community. Two wagons with wheat were damaged. People were not affected, said the head of the community, Viktor Kovalenko. According to him, as a result of the shelling of Zolachev himself, one residential private house was destroyed during the day, another, and another house was damaged by an explosive wave. As of 1800, there are no dead or injured in the community.
Zolashev. There's another report in northwest Belgrade, Russia. Explosions again in Belgrade. This is in Russia. Translate. The inhabitants of the builder again here pops in the sky. Uh, the inhabitants of the builder. It's probably a poor translation. Belarus or not, uh, Belgrade. It's in Russia. Six hours ago, governor of the Kursk region reassured population that explosions heard Russian aviation from Kursk region bombing Ukraine. SU-35 aircraft bombed the Sumy region of Ukraine. State Border Service. I haven't heard any news from Sumy in a long time. Seven hours ago. Media is too big. Okay. Let's get the translation. Hey, Draco. How you doing? Sumy region was fired upon from the SU-35 aircraft. State Border Service. State Border Service of Ukraine publishes a video of the consequences of today's airstrike in the Sumy region. It is alleged that the missile attack was carried out from the Su-35 aircraft. At the same time, the border guards claim that the Russian plane also fired at the territory of Russia. Interesting. Russian plane also fired at the, for false flags? At the same time, border guards claim that the Russian plane also fired at the territory of Russia. Russia will Russia will hit their own, it will strike their own infrastructure and their own people to propagate what they need to convey a message that they need. If they need a narrative to go there a certain way, they will make that happen, even if they have to. Uh, even if they have to strike their own things and their own people. All right, that's the updates around the country. Let's get an up. Let's look at the uh, the ship from yesterday and see if there's any verifications or updates or anything further on the Admiral Makarov before I forget. Let's see if there's anything. One day ago, twenty two hours ago. There hasn't been anything new, really. 17 hours ago. Forbes posted it. Second Russian warship. This is the newest one, 22 hours ago. Another Russian naval ship in the Black Sea was hit and left burning by the Ukrainian military, according to unconfirmed reports. There hasn't been any reports on it today. The Admiral Makarov, a 409-foot Russian frigate, was sailing close to Snake Island in the Black Sea off the coast of the Ukrainian port city of Odessa when it was reportedly hit by a R-360 Neptune anti-ship missile fired from the Ukrainian mainland. Per the Kyiv Post, Ukrainian general staff and the Ukrainian member of parliament Oleksiy Gonorachenko said that the ship had been hit. Russia denied that, however, it is unclear whether or not the ship had engaged in active combat with Ukrainian forces before it was struck. Several Twitter accounts monitor open source flight data gathered from satellites and transponders reported that Russian rescue vessels and aircraft had rushed to the area. Shortly after, reports emerged that the Makarov had been struck with a missile. Those accounts also reported that an unnamed U.S. military RQ-4 Global Hawk surveillance drone had been circling the area, indicating that an incident may have occurred. Photos of a ship burning claimed to be the Makarov by users were circulating on social media, though these have, not, though these have been unconfirmed. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said today that the United States had no information about the strike. The strike on the Makarov comes just three weeks after the Ukrainian military sunk the Moskova. The Moskova. The Moskva. Moskova. Why is it spelled like that? The Russian Navy's flagship in the maritime blockade of Ukraine. That ship was also hit by a Neptune missile, an indigenously developed system. Thank you so much, Race Lynn Skywater, for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Again, y'all, it is subscriber or it is supporter Saturday, so grab that member badge, join the channel, 
is a two nine three dollars a month for membership on the YouTube channel, and this is the only day a week I have the chat set to that feature. Thank you to all of our members. There hasn't been anything today on the that ship. A day ago. We read about all that yesterday. So nothing new. 21 hours ago. One day ago. There's 11 hours ago. Admiral Makarov, that's foreign. This is four hours ago, but these are foreign sources now. I'm not sure what... Some Ukrainian sources reported destroyed small Russian ship. What source is this? So it's still unconfirmed. It is still po it is still not yet possible to confirm when the photo was taken. So these reports are still yet unconfirmed on the ship. Still waiting to hear more. All right, let's go down our list. Good on our list on Twitter of the updates in the war. What is this near Easium? There are two interesting things about this clip. Precision counterfire against Russian artillery pieces. Not the usual area fire. There are only two Russian artillery pieces, not massed fires from a large unit. Uh, near Easium, two times a Russian 152 or two Russian 152 millimeter, two S3 Akatsia self-propelled howitzers were struck by Ukrainian counter battery fire, destroying them both when the ammo on board detonated. As claimed, Western supplies, high precision artillery was used and as can be seen, was effective. Oh, thank you, Laura. There we go, Tyler. Thank you. There we go. Laura and Todd, welcome back. Let's go to John before we get into the war coverage or the combat from the day. So this is John Sweeney. Day 73, will Putin nuke Ukraine? Interesting question. Let's see what John has to say. Orange hats in the chat for John Sweeney. Three of Vladimir Putin's war. Three. So I haven't done this before. It's my first day. But uh, will Vladimir Putin nuke Kiev? Will he nuke Ukraine? Because he's losing the war in Donbass. So I've spoken to two psychiatrists, Semyon Glusman, who spent 10 years in the Gulag, guarded by the KGB. And he says, no, uh, Putin is bad, but not mad. And secondly, I've spoken to Professor Jim Fallon, his professor of psychiatry at the University of California, and he too says that Putin is a rational psychopath. He lies beautifully. He lies without flaw. But he's not mad mad. So, for people who are worried about stuff, I'm going to have to break here because I'm going downhill. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Because <laughs> I'm not a nutter. <laughs> There's arguments against that. But my view is that Putin will not hit the nuclear button and if he does the machinery around him they note that hand that gripped the table when he uh, ordered General Shoigu the defense minister not to um, not to seize the steel plants in Maripol they note those puffy cheeks not a well man. I don't think the Russian machinery, the Kremlin's machinery, will obey him. So that's the good news. Love from Kiev. I also think too. He like put, like they need the land. They need the resources. They can't nuke it. They need they they want Ukraine for its resources. So that's another a reason why I think they won't. All right, Rob Lee, there's our war, war updates, any, any combat clips or updates from the day. 
uh, comment comment if you are a veteran of the you of the armed forces whether it's in the united states or foreign if you guys served in the military let me know in the chat thank you again to all of our veterans thank you video of the same russian tos1 alpha mlrs strikes and tanks we have an awesome veteran community here on mercado media that tune in Один танк нормальний. Ще один нормальний, але башня отут у нього. Це відео буде добре. Стаєм. Стаєм. <laughs> this, I, this video, it's a longer version, but this one's. Oh, here's an update. Here's a here's more video from Ukraine's SSO showing several Russian vehicles reportedly ever destroyed or on fire. Oh, so they're able to connect. <laughs> So they're able to connect the clips. So, okay. So this happens. This was May second. So you, a lot of you might have seen this clip, and then now they updated it to match this one with this one because I've seen both of these. But here they are together now, so that you guys can see them. На три вещи. Как течет вода, как бегают москали и как горит москальский танк. Right, and then here is the video on the ground from that video. The same Russian так, TOS подали... one is the aftermath of that. Неподалік Драгачев. Все покинута кацапська роздовбана техніка. Один танк нормальний. Ще один нормальний, але башня отут у нього. Це відео буде добре. Стаєм? Стаєм. Continuing on. So those two videos are connected. I, I do like when they do that and they can connect multiple clips. Even though those are were posted on different days, it helps uh, it helps provide a bigger picture. A video of artillery strikes from Ukraine's 14th Mechanized Brigade on Russian equipment. <laughs> Video showing a Russian cruise missile likely flying over Odessa. Oh, Cheryl, welcome to the Bite Size. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining the channel and supporting Mercado Media. Very fast video of the cruise missile. Video reportedly showing Russian ammunition on fire after a strike by Ukraine's 128th Mountain Assault Brigade. <laughs> Hundred twenty eighth Mountain Assault Brigade. All right. Just further further reminder of anybody in the back that needed to be told that there are more units in Ukraine's military beyond the Azov Battalion. There are many. 
right? There's a battalion as one unit. Russian BM-27 Uragon, multiple launch rocket systems in the Ezium area. Here's Ezium on the map, Russian-controlled city within Ukraine. The fight looks, seems like their Ukrainian forces are, are putting up a fight for it. I've been seeing frequent reports now of Ukraine's military around the, the city of Ezium. Wondering if we're going to start seeing less red here. The city has gone back and forth it's in the early inv early invasion days between Ukraine and Russia. It is right now it's under Russian uh ter Russian occupied the, the city of Izium. Again, this is a Russian video of their multiple launch rocket systems being used. Russia's multiple launch rocket systems. Thank you, Laura. It's just a different variation. That's the 8x8. Uragon MLRS. Video of a Russian T-72B3 tank on fire and a second decapitated tank by Ukraine's 93rd Mechanized Brigade. You can see the fire under the hatch. T-72B3 tank on fire, that, and then a decapitated tank, and you can see the, <laughs> you can see the fire, here, right here, the tank is cooking, video of a Russian 2S7M Malka in the Ezium region, same region that I showed you guys in the previous clip, they've been fighting over, are you Russia and Ukraine, currently under Russian control. Big howitzer battles. What's this? I believe there's already M777s on that front line now, but it's going to be a big back and the Donbass is now going to be a big back and forth howitzer artillery battle. Basically like World War One, only with drones and drones and yeah, drones and more drones. 
Photos of damaged Russian T-80 BVM tank and a damaged destroyed BMPs in Izium as a result of end loss strikes by Ukraine's 93rd Mechanized Brigade. Got some destroyed, destroyed Russian tanks. Got the V on it. Video of a strike on a Russian Sturm. What is that? A Russian Sturm S A T G M carrier by Ukraine's. 30th Mechanized Brigade, so we'll look up what a, a Russian Sturm S is. Here it is, in, here it is in the past tense, but we'll look at it, what it looks like when it's not being hit. Share any information that you guys have as we're going into our Discord server. Like I'm also live during these time, during this time during the days because a lot of people are active and following the the news like right now because there is news during this hour during these hours of of things happening. Uh, during the 9 p.m. hour, it was a lot of recap of the day, and I was I was like not really first to report on things, and so this time period during the daytime uh, allows for me to actually like be ahead and report things as they happen, such as the evacuation from the Mariupol uh, Azovstal plant. All elderly women and children have been evacuated. Uh, so if you guys have any information that's coming out today or right now, please share into our Discord server into the links channel or the video clips channel. All right, artillery fire from Ukraine's 79th Air Assault Brigade reportedly on a Russian tank. That was a very fast video. Let's go back one more time. Artillery fire from Ukraine's 79th Air Assault Brigade on a Russian tank. Interesting. So also let's, let's finish the war the war clips and then we're getting forest fires or fires in Kyrgyzstan. Video of the first T-90M tank combat loss. Oh wait, no, 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 we need to, hold on. I'm getting scrambled, sorry. I can't get scrambled. We need to look up this Sturm S-A-T-G-M carrier. See what this thing is that Ukraine destroyed. Russian school bus hit with a... What's that? Self-propelled anti-tank system. This is gonna be. I don't think this is gonna be. In. All right, here it is. This is what they destroyed. Nine P one five seven Krasantima S multi-purpose self-propelled. Anti-tank guided weapon system was developed as a launch platform for the 9M123 Chrysantima missile. It is built by KBM Engineering Design Bureau and entered service with the Russian Army in 2005. It is designed to detect and destroy the existing and future main battle tanks, armored vehicles, low-flying aerial targets, lightweight surface targets, and field fortifications, including steel shelters and bunkers, in both day and night under all weather conditions. It offers- Oh, that thing, that's a useful- Useful piece of equipment. It's high rate of fire and is protected against electronic countermeasures. This vehicle only needs a crew of two with two Chrysantima missiles in a ready to fire state. Reloading operations can be done automatically under armor protection. Although the 9P157 uses a BMP3 chassis, newer missile, and dual guidance mode, its mission and design philosophy is similar to the older 9P149 Sturm S tank destroyer. That's the one Russia has. That's the one that's seen out there. It's just an old. This is it's an older variant of what we're looking at right now, but they do the same thing. That's the what that's what Ukraine just destroyed. What what this is wild though because Ukraine is using essentially. No, I said this is useful, but I just remembered that Ukraine is 
using what this tank does, what the Sturm S tank does with their javelins, their in laws. Uh, they're they're using uh, shoulder fired rocket propelled systems, and when you, when Russia is using tanks to do that, Sturm S is is, is what that is for. Russia sh or Ukraine. This tank shoot destroyer Ukraine, is based on the. B Ukraine is shooting down helicopters, airplanes. They're taking you know, ships out <laughs> with uh, their 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 shoulder fired rocket systems, and this thing is a tank that does that, but. MP3 chassis but is not fitted with a turret. Instead, the troop compartment is filled with a twin round retractable pedestal launcher which is connected to an automatic loader. The 9P157 has an optical sight with laser. For Saklo's guidance of the laser so this isn't going to be, this, the ones that Russia has doesn't have later laser guidance. That's an updated version. This is what Russia has. The 9P149 Sturm S. 9P149 Sturm See if we have a video on that thing, that old piece of equipment. Well, we've got a dev blog, and it's Russian. Let's take a look. Oh my god, dude! It's in War World of War, World of Tanks. Uh, it's in a video game. The Russian question. military channel. Это доты, зоты, бетонные укрепления. Ну, различные малые корабли типа катеров. This footage was shot in Libya. It's clearly seen that all those who used it are satisfied. Why do they have to have voices like that? I don't understand why they have to deepen their voices. I just want to learn about the the vehicle. Every all their military stuff is just over the top. And none of it matters because their military is awful. Whole world. That's how you know that, like we, like we've been, their Russian propaganda has been propagating their military to be like this powerful military force, and it's just fake. It's not even true. They have missiles. That's about it. They don't have a military. And the chrysanthemum was adopted only. They have people that wear uniforms, and then they get sent out to be cannon fodder by Russia. 2005. It was first shown at the 2014 Victory Day Parade. That's so they use it in their parades often. We're going to be watching that Victory Day Parade as well, so we'll be seeing plenty of that. I'm sure we'll see plenty of them. So that's what that Sturm ATGM carrier was, and it was destroyed. All right, video of that first T90M tank combat loss. Старый солдат выезд. They have nukes, yeah, and private military. I think that Wagner EMC group is the only group really even doing anything or getting ground for Russia. First T-90M tank combat loss. You looked up a T-90? How Putin's super tank was crushed. So the T90 is was built like a Panzer main battle is their main battle tank. I just want to learn about the T90, dude. We know we know all about T72s. Episode. There we go. This might be a good one. Combat approved. Is this just going to be like an intense video? 30 years ago. In many ways, this accounts for legends and myths that have been circulating about it. Some of them even made by the experts themselves. Meanwhile, it is this tank that has been slated to become one of the most ubiquitous in the Russian military. The new vehicle is based on the T-90 platform, which has proven to be a reliable platform both in Russia and abroad. Being as reliable and powerful as it is, the tank nevertheless came into being 30 years ago. 
In these years, tank production has made a huge leap forward. Efforts to modernize equipment cost-effectively resulted in this upgraded version of the original T-90. It's got wood on it. It's got the it's got wood wood on it. Well, wasn't wasn't it very wasn't very great of a tank, was it? Okay. But it did fine in Syria. Start assault of used. There it is now. Was were. Got a co got cope cages on it. They're their biggest Shishem battle Kharkov. tank. So their biggest their biggest frigates and their biggest tanks are L's. Russian Ministry of Defense of a Russian MSTAS battery in Ukraine. So Russian Russian video of Russian vehicles. I know, literally. T90 is their best tank and they still got they still took it out. I mean what do you do as a military when your best when your best your best equipment is just getting just destroyed? Well, Ukraine's using a combination of guerrilla tactics and conventional warfare. Like they they got both go. They got listen. They have trench warfare, artillery, guerrilla warfare, and then they they actually are trained in like combat or in urban operations too. So like Ukraine's like that was like uh, I mean there's no jungles right. There's no jungles in Ukraine. But Ukraine's got the advantage of like they're they're they got underground tunnels and and systems and they're they're well they're well embedded in their own country, able to take on this these type of uh, this equipment. Another video from location showing the same T eighty BV and a second T eighty tank. It was a panorama, Nasha. More tanks, more Russian tanks destroyed. Три с половиной часа общего обстрела. И вот она панорама наша. Video showing a Russian MTLB and a T on the same same video or same location, different video. In the Kharkiv Oblast. Oh, God. Hell no, nah, dude. Зато наша буханка целая. This, this, that all just happened after this video was taken. This dude's still in his. Is he in a trench or a crater? I think he looks like he's in a trench. Could be a crater, but it looks like it was dug. Like this looks like it was dug down. Craters aren't usually like they're not straight up and down like that. They're more like a spread out hole. A gradual decline or gradual depression. So I'm thinking he's in a in a trench or. A, a fighting position there. Rosgavirda troops with the Earl VV MRAP and Kirsten. This is the city of Kirsten, occupied city, Russian occupied city here. To the southeast of Mykolaiv. Members of Rosgavirda Spetsnaz detachment returning to Kabardino, Bulgarian Republic from Ukraine, as well as the Elbrus Sobar. So they're returning back to Russia, I'm guessing. Kabardino, Balkanian Bul Republic. Where's that? It's in. Uh, it's a Republic of Russia. Where in the hell is that?
north of Georgia. So here's Ukraine. It's on the red. It's the red marker. That's the Republic. That that these Rosgavirda troops are returning to. The Spetsnaz detachment. Our special forces would just would destroy those. Would destroy their special forces easily. Photos of team in Oman returning from Ukraine. Photos of ZHS 12M and modified LSHZ 1 plus helmets after they were reportedly struck by a mortar and grad firing. From May 4th. Russian Orlin 10 video showing Russian strikes on Ukrainian positions reportedly in the Lehman area. Lyman. Let's look exactly where this is at. The Lyman region. Donetsk. North of Donetsk. Northeast of Kramatorsk and Slovyanetsk. So it's in this it's in this pocket on our war map. In the Donbass. This little pocket right here of white space that Ukraine still has control over. Orlin 10 video. Those or those drones are awful, but they're they're good for surveillance. It's about it, I suppose. But even then, the video you can see the video quality that uh, I mean, even the the Azov battalion uses for their drones is like 4K high definition. And then Russia has these uh, Canon cameras that you can get at like Target. A Russian cruise missile strike on a warehouse. Even the mechanized battalion or the mechanized brigade that Ukraine has has better UAVs. And it's not terrible, but it's still potato that Russia has. Russian KA-52 helicopters. So here's a, a good look at one of those alligators. And yeah, they got a 144p for real. A Russian SU-25S. Very fast video, five seconds. Low flying aircraft. I wonder if they found a way or a certain elevation to avoid Ukraine's air defense. A Russian Su 25, where? They have locations. In the Ezium area. This is Ezium. Yo, what up, Blake? How you doing? Right. Look at the countryside, though. Beautiful countryside. All things aside, never. I would really do want to go visit Ukraine some year. I would. There wasn't Su 25s flying in the air, bombing cities in Ukraine. This would be just like a, just sitting here and looking at everything. Would be would be peaceful outside of a war. Terrible. You hear the birds chirping, but you got Su 25s flying in the background.
11 hours ago. These are the same SU-25s flying in the Easium area. Low-flying SU-25 attack aircraft in the E. This is all from the Easium. A-52 helicopter firing rockets at Ukrainian positions. That's their alligator helicopter. Hey, John Grant, thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thank you, John. A Russian Mi-28N helicopter firing rockets at Ukrainian positions in Donbass. No. Days ago, we've seen that para Russian paratrooper in Easium. Another video of TB2 UCAV strikes on Snake Island, including what looks to be like a Project 11 770 Cerna class landing aircraft. So they're starting to Ukraine is starting to hit ships in the Black Sea with their their TB2 drones. Here is Snake Island, right here. This is Snake Island. That uh, famous Russian warship, Go F Yourself, that was the transmission from this island. It's a speck, hard to see. There's only enough, I think there's like two build, two buildings on the entire island, maybe, maybe three. One thing too, I'm gonna to need help um, from the chat on Discord if we could help calculate what time the Victory Day parade on the 9th starts in Russia, so I can I know what time I need to be up and streaming it at because I know it's gonna be at some like it's gonna be at like 3 a.m. 4 a.m. our time or something silly. I know I'm gonna to have to wake up at a silly time on Monday. <laughs> Noticing a lot of the, one of the biggest genres in Ukraine is the techno. Like rave culture. They literally had a, a rave in Kyiv like a few weeks ago in a bomb shelter. Where the, one of the DJs held a rave to raise money for humanitarian efforts. Yeah, that was a missile strike. This is the Baraktar TB2 drone.
So I'm seeing that this time during the day is a good time for you guys to tune in, huh? The 1 p.m. time frame. So that's the Snake Island TV2 UCAV strikes on Snake Island. Another video of Russian troops with an RPO rise. Okay, Russian video of Russian soldiers. За меня же. Передаем большое спасибо спонсорам за амуницию, за наушники. И за все, что как говорит, нас поддерживаете. Победа за нами. Снимай. До конца вводи. Hey, Glenn, welcome to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining. Zill? Glenn Shipley, thank you. Can you want a text alert? Make sure that you have the notification bell turned on. I'll show you guys how to do it after this video. YouTube, the social media makes you do extra things to get notifications. I don't know why they just, I have nearly 40,000 subscribers and I just want all of them to get notified that I'm live and it just doesn't work that way. Social media just is garbage with the algorithms. Also join our Discord server too, because they do get the streams get posted automatically to the server. Oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, Kaligor. Welcome to Snacks, guys. Welcome to the channel, and thank you, Chance Wigington. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Ну в тот тот сектор по дому давай. В тот сектор по дому там. Навесом. Russians trying their hands. Ну так мы кругом мучим. Russia's got a. Let's see what that is. An RPL rise. We might have looked this up already. Let's just double check. Got an RPL. I think they've had an RPL schmel. Is it the is it the same thing? The schmel. That's the thermobaric bazooka. We've already looked this up, so I thought. What's the RPL right? Is it, I'm guessing it's the Schmel, just different spelling. Okay. Thermal. It's the thermobaric, was uh, shoulder fired rocket. Here's another video of it. RPL rise thermobaric system. So you know how they have those thermobaric, thermobaric, thermobaric multiple launch rocket trucks. That we've been seeing it's those trucks that shoot rockets off like like rapid fire this is a, a shoulder fired rocket version of that <laughs> All right, really quick on YouTube to make sure that you get notified. Just to give you an example, just type in Snack Squad, my gaming channel, if you guys are interested in gaming. Um, but make sure on the channel homepage, and this is mobile or computer. Oh, I'm on this one. I need to go to Mercado Media. I'll show you on Mercado Media, the channel that you guys are watching. All right, here we are. You now I'm subscribed. I'll just unsubscribe and show you. All right, so you need to do this. Hit the red subscribe button, and then the bell. Hit all. All right, if you hit the bell, there's three options. Personalized and none. 
you need to make sure that the bell says all in the drop down menu. You guys can see that. You guys can't see that. There we go. So subscribe button and then make sure the notification bell next to it, there's a bell. Make sure it says all. So red button subscribe, free to do. You get notifications and then you need to manually change it to all. I wish it didn't make you do all that, but that's how social media works, unfortunately. Make you do the most. Russian 2S7M in the Easium area. This is that their howitzer. Big howitzer being used. We saw a video. Here's some picture. Big howitzer batteries. Video of 2SM Malka heavy artillery. So here's the here's that artillery crew at work. I know them. It's big muzzle flash. Chechen fighters on the on the howitzers. This is a Chechen crew. The whole truck should work. Dude. The whole truck rocks. They have a the Chechen fighters are trained on this thing. That's that's who's operating. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't even look like they have ear protection. Look at this guy. Do you have ear pro? Nope. Nope. There might be something in his ear. Can't tell. Doesn't look like it, though. It looks like th this guy just closes his ears. Hell no, nah, dude. Can you imagine the tinnitus that the, any soldiers that... Any Russian soldiers that make it out of this are going to have? Yeah, these guys definitely have some type of... This guy's sitting on the thing with... Dude. I feel like there'd be a concussion blast just from being close to this truck alone. When it, when it goes off. For sure. Alright, Chechen Force is using. I just wanted to see. And it doesn't look like they have ear pro on. A video of Russian fire on the Azovstal. This is a daily occurrence. <laughs> At the Azovstal. Again, to remind you that all women, children, and elderly have been evacuated. That's, that is the reports from the Azovstal plant. Video reportedly of a Russian artillery strikes on Ukrainian BMP in the...
All right, that's the war the war clips for the day. Now I'm, I'm going to end the end the day on this Vice article. So we, again, today we went through the entire country. Uh, this Vice uh, piece, it's, it's graphic in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to open the chat up through this uh, video at the ending, and then uh, that'll be it for the day. All right, this is a Vice uh, a Vice piece, and again, I want you guys to know that there are graphic scenes in this piece so viewer extra viewer discussion here um it was shared to our discord and it apparently it did a, they did a really good job with this report so this was posted yesterday it's called the next phase of russia's war in ukraine um from vice news all right do your extra viewer discussion advised during this portion and then we're going to wrap up for the day after this all right Again, make sure you guys have liked the video, you're subscribed to the channel. I will be editing this stream down into like a shorter video so it can be consumed by more people and then more, hopefully more will tune into the live streams. And then I'll post this video later. That'll be the next next thing for our channel here. Uh, shorter, shorter videos, like 10 to 15 minute videos of these, since we're at two hours now, so it'll be shorter, con shorter form content for anybody that just can't tune into the streams the entire time. All right, next phase of Russia's war in Ukraine on Vice News. It's only just very recently that this area was taken back by the Ukrainians and already got this mammoth effort going on to clear away this rubble from these apartments that have been destroyed. And underneath, they believe, are still a bunch of bodies that they're trying to find. It's been a long 10 weeks since Russia invaded Ukraine. Over 11 million Ukrainians have fled their homes. Thousands of civilians have died. It seems like there was a whole family that was sheltering in the basement when this bomb hit. Under here you can see just a mangled body that barely resembles a human at all. There's going to be graphic images in this. In the north of the country, where Russian soldiers have just recently retreated from, bodies are being exhumed with signs of torture, rape and execution. The Ukrainian government claims that these amount to thousands of war crimes. In early March, Russian soldiers arrived in the sleepy village of Yahidne, just north of Kyiv, and set up base here. Uh, my, what my until just two months ago, this was 12-year-old Yulia's school. And this is a body here? Yeah. У нас в підвалі люди умирали, большинство людей пожилого возраста, тому що не хватало кислорода. After arriving here, Russian soldiers went door to door, taking hundreds of villagers from their homes and bringing them to this school. They forced them inside this basement, where they stayed for 25 days. The villagers believed they were used as human shields to protect the Russian military unit from Ukrainian bombs. What does this say on the door? Осторожно, дети. Are you comfortable going down there? Думаю, да. Are you sure? Да. Человек були просто проходи забитые, люди просто лежали на проходах, потому что було негде спать. Я спала отут. You're very brave. I would have been absolutely terrified. Було страшно дуже, тому що вони ж не поні... ми ж не розуміли, чого вони сюди привели нас і що з нами зробиш. Було так якось не по собі, що людей ми тут виносять, ну так було не 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 дуже це бачити. Did you do these drawings up here? Да, я малювала і це Росія проти України і в итоге побіжила Україна. No one knows exactly how many passed away while the Russians were here. The imprisoned villagers tried to keep count. Scratched into the wall to the right of this door are the names of the elderly who died. On the left are some of those who were killed. That list includes Anatoly Yanuk, or Tolik as he's known, a neighbour of Yulia's. 
Тут форточка або двері тільки чуть закриються різко, і вже стрес. Ми ще від цього не відійшли, ще ми довго будемо тут. Толик – Катерина's nephew. Ми прийшли додому, і так в домі вже було просто все вибите. Посуда побита, машинку вони розбили. Вони просто відкривають шухляд, які можна які не добили, і гадять просто туди. Це не люди, це не люди. Я не знаю, звідки він їх копав, той Путін їх. Ну це дикуни. О, вау, тут багато вікнері. Там артилерія тяжела, о, там танки, там бронетранспортери. О, тут їхня оборона, от вони так оборудували, захищалися так. Вау. Wow. What about your What with your nephew? Племянником. Він ввечері йшов додому в той же день, коли вони війшли в село. О, так сказали, що лежись. А Толік сказав, я на своїй землі, чого я буду лежитися? І йому вистріли все. And what about your son? He was here at the same time, right? І тоді вони його ночі питали, тому що в нього в шкафу був форма з Національної гвардії з академії. Ну, я стала кричати, просити, потім це саме страшне, що було. Ой, просіть, бо буду плакати. Katerina's son, Sergei, is still in hospital, recovering from torture. Her nephew, Anatoly, has been buried. We obtained his death certificate, which states that he was shot in the head. When the Russians finally left Katerina's home, they forgot to take with them possible evidence of who they are, like pay slips for the soldiers. So these are documents people, that you found when you came back home? A lot of people in the United States have already forgot about this war. I mean, just by view count alone. A lot of people, because again, I have a big Western audience. We have a lot of people from Europe, uh, but a lot of people in the United States already have either been, or have either fell to the prop, the Russian propaganda, both left and right leaning people. They got, they got both of them. Russia got both of them during the beginning of the war. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people just tuned out because they were like, oh, Russia is invading because there's Nazis. We don't like Nazis. Oh, I'm not even going to pay attention to that war. I'm not going to pay attention to that. Ukraine deserve again. This is what the the Ukraine deserves all all that. Uh, we don't like Nazis. Psh, I'm not paying attention to that news. And then they just tuned out after like the first week, second week. Oh my god! And so we got porn bots too. Hold on. And then we got YouTubes with the porn bots going on. But this is still this hasn't changed. This is still very much a, a current issue, and it's going to become worse as time goes on. Їхні записи, так. Да. Ось, пожалуйста, один. Тут небагато людей. Оце ці, напевно, що жили тут. We spoke to over a dozen locals. All of them said the Russian soldiers occupying this area were of Asian appearance. Some said the fighters told them they came from the Russian Republic of Tuva. Buddhist books were also left behind. Based on the documents Katerina and others found, social media searches brought up multiple matches for these names and soldiers linked to them, yeah, though we were unable to banned. verify their identities. <clears throat> we sent Russia's Ministry of Defense these names and They're asked if their soldiers had taken an entire village hostage, killing the elderly and executing the disobedient. We're still waiting for their response. When the Russian government has publicly denied that war crimes have been committed, calling it fake news. We wanted to speak to someone in Russia currently waiting to be deployed, to understand their willingness to fight for a government accused of these atrocities. We contacted an individual currently serving with Russia's National Guard, who spoke to us because we agreed to hide his identity. So you're waiting for a command to go to the front lines. I mean, how are you feeling about that? You know, just today we met children who had been taken hostage. We met people who had been taken hostage. We met family members whose, you know, loved ones had been shot in the head at point blank range. Всякое может быть. Я же еще раз говорю, это война. Но а то, что был казнен, это просто сейчас люди могут рассказывать все, что угодно. Кому интересно, кому 
всякое может тоже говорить. Типа российская армия заходит и уничтожает мирное население. Никогда в это не поверю. Сейчас просто украинская пропаганда... You say that you want to defend your country, you want to fight for your country. Is it worth all the bloodshed? Is it worth all the Ukrainian lives that are going to be lost from this? Безопасность нашей страны для меня дороже всего, если честно. Это война, потому что на войне без жертв не бывает. Это понимает каждый человек. Over the last month, Russia has withdrawn its forces from around Kyiv and instead sent thousands of troops to Ukraine's east, the Donbass region. A full-scale assault has been launched on this area, which has deep historical and cultural ties to Russia. We're with a group of volunteers who are heading into a little town called Severodonetsk to try and evacuate some people. You can see on this map here that this whole area is now surrounded on three sides by Russians. This could be one of the last chances for those guys to get out. It's a really insane situation here. This shelling is literally on top of this city. Shit. It's just a mad scramble to get people out of here as quickly as possible. We need to go. Come in, come in. When the volunteers come knocking, residents have to decide in a matter of minutes if they'll leave their homes along with everyone and everything they know. It's really crazy given just the level of fear that these people are having to live with and still there's just so much reluctance to leave your home, to leave everything you know. Come on. I can't imagine how traumatic these last couple of months have been. This is your granddaughter? Were you scared that something might happen to your family? For those who stay, life has moved almost entirely underground. It's not just fear that people live with. There's also deep divisions among them. Many families here in the East come from both sides of the border. Why is it that you're not leaving? I mean, the bombs are continuing to fall. What happens if Russia does take this region? And do you mind if Russia does take this area? No, почему не? Это это его земли. Он их отдал просто Украине. Еще Ленин. Помолчи. Луганская. Я считаю, что он старший брат. Как он может быть братом Путин? Как? 
даже без войны он брат там не был Путин. Мы другая держава, мы Украина, а то Россия. Он убивать нас пришел, а не освобождать. Как это? Путин брат и бьет по нас. Видите разные мнения какие? These pockets of pro-Russian sentiment. Such shit's starting to be like in in the in world in the world in general these days, man. Are making the Ukrainian authorities nervous that their own people could betray them. At a nearby police station, officers have captured locals who they believe are working for the other side. So this guy is a Russian prisoner of war. They're telling us, and they say that they've been able to catch quite a number of people that are either working directly with the Russians or spying for the Russian government here. Интересует а, то, как вы передавали информацию. Я не передавала информацию. Вернее, как мне О, просто... Хорошо. Интересует ваша связь а, с работниками МГБ ДНР. So this police officer has just started his interrogation process. He has a suspected saboteur, and they suspect that she's providing information to the Russians. The police showed us the suspected spy's phone. No way. That's a password? A Z? Да, Z. Z, Z, Z. So, he, so look at how he had to open the phone. Started his interrogation process. He has a suspected saboteur, and they suspect that she's providing information to the Russians. The police showed us the suspected spy's phone. No way. Wow. That's her password? A Z? Да, Z, Z is the sign Z. for Russia? Да. И вот переписочка, она общается. Это переписка с ее куратором, там, где он, он ей вставит какие-то задачи, которые она должна выполнить и предоставить там ту или иную информацию. Later on, the detainee agreed to speak with us. What do you think will happen to you now? Потом, не знаю что. Смотри, какая ситуация сложится. И, э, там что там говорили. Кто-то говорил, расстреляет, кто-то говорил, 20 лет. Этот конфликт, смотри, в какую сторону. Поэтому мне теперь придется молиться, чтобы победила Россия. I mean, can you understand that given what Russia is doing to millions of Ukrainians living in these conditions, suffering under these conditions in this war, that there'll be a lot of anger to you for expressing that? Все против войны. Я не хочу, чтобы гибли люди. Но от нас, от меня не зависит этого абсолютно. Если бы Украина не вступала в НАТО, то Россия не наступать не. For most Ukrainians, the fact there are people helping the opposition is a hard pill to swallow. Russia's offensive is relentless and unforgiving, the human cost immeasurable. Just a few weeks ago, Alexander Olhovik encouraged his 11-year-old daughter Alyssa and pregnant wife Marina to evacuate their home. They packed up their lives and boarded the train in Kramatorsk. Just at that moment, several guided missiles hit the station. Both Alyssa and her mother died, along with 57 other civilians. Alexander has only just retrieved their bodies. We've seen so many deaths at this point, so many funerals, but the horrors of this war just keep getting worse. Alexander was trying to send his family away to safety and he's facing just this heart-wrenching task of having to bury them. Что мы так неправильно сделали? Я думал, ну, моя дочь вырастет Я еще внука увижу, а получилось как-то наоборот. What was she like? Она как папа, как маленькая пацанка, которая, блин, всегда в центре внимания. Вот где она, там вечно знаю шум, такая бух, водородная бомба, такая энергии было много. Но только эту энергию, блин, кто-то нарушил и... Не знаю, куда дальше. Ну. Прости, дочка. Поймешь, папа. Прости, дочка. Лиска. Папа тебя очень любит.
прощай, родная. Прости за все, то. Yeah, that didn't even got me there. <clears throat> yeah, neither that one got me. Holy shit, dude. All right. That's going to be the stream for the day. I want to leave us with that. I want to leave us on that note for the day. Um, and just think on that. Think about that video. That video is posted to our, uh, our Discord server. Oh, man, this war is so fucked. All right, y'all. Hey, I'll be live again, maybe later, but I'm going to be editing this stream down and making a shorter video of it. All right. And that'll, that'll be posted later. Um, we'll see if there's more updates, but I'll be finding out what day the, uh, the victory day parade is and we'll react to that. All right. All right, y'all try to have a good afternoon, but again, uh, it's important not to forget this and the the real stories and the people that this war is affecting as much as we're watching it on the computer fuck dude as much as we're watching it from a distance um this shit is very much real all right so thank you guys for tuning in make sure you're subscribed to the channel like the video see you guys later